So on this week's episode, we're talking about everything to do with the cost of living, redundancies and the current marketplace. So Roni, what would be your initial advice to someone who um, is sort of worried about the rising cost of living? So obviously, the cost of living is something that's on everyone's minds at the moment anyway, um, and it affects everything to do with your life but obviously people's main concerns are you know their work that is their income that's how they're getting themselves through this crisis so the best thing to do you know is prepare for the worst and hope for the best so what I mean by that is just make sure that you've got everything in check in case something does go wrong Mm. so make sure that your CV is up to date make sure you know where you're at with your career and where you would go for your next step and just make sure that if you were suddenly to be in the job market tomorrow that you are prepared for it and you know you know what you need to be doing so whether that's having a look on LinkedIn just having a look which recruitment agencies are out there which ones are in your area which ones specialize in what you do just have a look at the market see what jobs are on at the moment what sort of salary that you would be on if if you've obviously been in a job for quite a few years you may not realize but you could actually be getting you know 5 10k more than what you're on at the moment anyway just because that's how the market is now so just have a look around do your research um and just make sure you're prepared really yeah i think there's there's a lot of good tools um sort of on the internet on the job board site you can do sort of salary comparisons and things like that to see what other companies in the area are paying um and i think the important thing is really, I mean, it's a lot easier said than done is just don't panic and sort of yeah. fling your CV across every single job board. Yeah. Um, most importantly, make sure your CV is up to date to start with before you even think about doing that. Um, but if you really sort of have a plan, I mean, sort of, as you said, that you can sort of drill down into the areas you'd like to go for, the sort of jobs you'd like to apply for and everything. So you're not just applying for loads of different roles um, just because you need a job. Yeah. And I think before you get ahead of yourself anyway, the first thing you should be doing is talking to your employer because, you know, a lot of them may have plans in motion already to sort of support with cost of living. I know quite a few of um, my clients are actually offering their um, staff cost of living payments. So just a little boost around this time of year to help them, you know, with those extra costs of bills and things like that. So just have a chat with your employer because they might have some kind of system set up that they can offer. They might be willing to, you know, if you're traveling really far and the petrol costs are a real concern for you, you know, they might be able to offer you hybrid working now to sort of help you through that. Or, you know, you might be able to arrange with some colleagues to carpool into work to sort of share those petrol costs um, amongst each other. So The first thing to do is really just have that conversation with your employer and and be really transparent about your concerns. And I think it is really important to sort of sit down and have a look at your situation because it's with the the whole cost of living and rises and everything. It really is a case by case basis. It's so unique to each person. So obviously, like your commute to work, if you live down the road from work, you can walk. That gets rid of the petrol cost immediately. But if you live 45 minutes away and you've got a, a big commute ahead of you and your employer is currently saying, no, you need to be in the office every day then it it can be a worry. But then on the flip side of that, we've obviously got the rise in fuel prices and then now we've got the rise in energy prices. (laughs) But I say now, (laughs) it's been going on for a while, but obviously it was literally at the start of this month, wasn't it, that the um that the price caps increased yeah. again yeah and it's kind of like i mean we were saying that smart meters and stuff before you even start in the morning are on 70 80 p yeah depending on the size of your house and it's like it's worth really working out whether it is more cost effective for you to be in the office or for you to be working from home or whether that hybrid model will sort of work out both ways because ultimately if most of your salary is going on getting to work then it's not really worthwhile. No, exactly. And obviously with the government scheme at the moment where they're taking money off from October till January off of people's bills. Anyway, you know, maybe now is the time that it's actually better for you to save those petrol costs and just be at home you know, working from home for the next couple months um, because, you know, they are taking a little bit of money off the heating. But again, it is something that you need to add up personally, but you do also need to talk to your employer about. And I think if you do have that conversation with your employer, even if they're not widely advertising, I mean, I know a lot of the larger companies have um, put out big things like we're giving everyone £750 yeah. and loads of different schemes and everything. Even if your employer is a lot smaller or is an advertising, just have a talk to your manager. They're there to help you yeah like there could be they could literally assess you on a case-by-case basis and really sort of help you out and sort you out yeah, with something course, so at the yeah. end of the day you're not going to be sort of productive and happy if you're worrying about things like that yeah um, and they're there to help you yeah but of course at the same time I think it is important as well to consider that 
you know, we're all suffering on an individual basis, but every single company is going to be suffering yeah. and every single company is going to be really worried that they're going to, you know, they don't want to make redundancies, which is something we'll talk about a little bit later on in the episode. But I think, you know, obviously it'd be nice if there's something your employer can do, but if they can't do anything for you, you know, it's not because they don't want to, it's because they're trying to hold on as best they can and make it through this recession you know if there is going to be one and they don't want to have to cut any staff so they might not be able to offer any additional payments but you know I'm sure if you have a conversation with them they will do what they can to help and I think in that situation as well you've really got to make a decision yourself whether you want to stick with your current employer and sort of ride it out or whether it is worth making a move I mean if there's going to be a massive salary increase then obviously yes if it's maybe for a couple of grand, is it going to be worth it? It's really, it's it's a really difficult situation. Is, and there, there is no right or wrong answer at the moment. I think that's the most difficult thing. A lot of people like just sort of a logical route and a, yes, I want to do this. No, I don't want to do that. But it's just an absolute like whirlwind of what of everything that's going on at the moment. Yeah. And I think whatever you do, is going to be a risk because even if you join a new company that are offering you 10k more you know you may not know what the finances look like in that company and maybe they wouldn't actually make it through a recession so it might have been that you're actually better off staying put so it is obviously we can't really offer any sort of set in stone advice because it does differ case to case and you have to go with your gut really but I mean what we can offer is that you know, as recruiters, we're available for you to call at any time. You don't have yeah. to be actively in the market. You know, if, if we had someone call us up and say, hey, look, I'm a little bit worried about the cost of living. I'm worried that maybe I could be made redundant. You know, just come and talk to us. Send us your latest CV and we can just always keep an eye out for you. If you say, yeah. look, I'm currently on 50K. If something pops up at 60K or, if, or I'm currently commuting 45 minutes to work, if something pops up, you know, within five miles of my postcode, let me know about it. And we yeah. can have those details on file. And any time something pops up, we'll just give you a call straight away. And at that point, you can weigh it up. And that doesn't, you don't have to be then active on the job boards at like, because it takes a lot of time looking for a job it takes a lot of time and then that way you don't also have your cv out there for loads for loads of different people to ring you and things like that as well it is very a sort of tentative approach and um obviously as recruiters i know other agencies will do this as well is people we can actually sort of take you to market yeah and um sort of speak to to companies directly to see what sort of things that they can offer but i think it is salary is sort of the biggest driving point obviously because it's a cost of living crisis and um cv library actually did some research on four thousand workers um and seven over so out of the four thousand people 75 percent um was would say that they would look for a new job over the cost of living rises and inflation and 69 percent of those people said that salary was the main driver for their move which is wild. Yeah. It is. I mean, that just goes to show then that the vast majority of the UK, they are concerned and they are all sort of, I guess, on the edge of being in the market. They're all so yeah. close to sort of putting their CV online. But, you know, as Lizzie's just said, you don't have to put it online for a million and one recruiters to call you. You can look for specific recruitment agencies that are maybe in your area or maybe someone who specializes. So we, for example, we have specialists in marketing and sales and engineers and, in, in, you know, whatever yeah. industry it is. And you can go to that specific recruiter and say, hey, look, you recruit in the market that I'm in. This is what I need. This is what I'm looking out for. Here's my CV. Here's my number. Give me a yeah. call if something pops up. And it could even be a case you can really do it on your own terms. As in, you could ask whichever agency you wanted to use. You could say, look, if you if you see a job spec that you think I'd like, just pop it in my inbox. Yeah. It doesn't even need to have to things like that. And then if it is something that it might just come along at the right time, but it's a really, I think the sort of message of of this bit is you've got to be proactive rather than reactive because if you're sitting there and you're sort of worrying about it and you're letting it mound up and mound up and mound up and then all of a sudden you're like I can't afford to get to work anymore yeah and oh I can't afford to eat and everything which is which really sadly is going to be the situation for a lot of people yeah but if you start to be really sort of proactive getting yourself out there getting your CV in check and doing everything you can then it is going to really help you in the long run. Definitely. So let's then talk about 
advice for people who are either have been made redundant or feel as though they're on the verge of being made redundant so what would you suggest to those people so i'd say obviously when it, it depends on the company and the situation that you've been made redundant in some will literally just lay you off with immediate effect and um, obviously dependent on contracts and things like that other times there will be redundancy packages available and um, where you, obviously you, you get sort of a payout um, and sometimes there will be options to move to another job within the company. Um, so I think, again, it really is on an individual basis. I mean, if you really like the company that you're working for, you've been with them for years, you've got loyalties to them and you do believe in the ethos of the company, then I'd 100% always say sort of really look at whether the other options there will, will work for you. Um, if you. If you have just immediately been made redundant, Again, it's it's making sure that you have sort of put all that stuff in place prior, yeah, that your CV is ready, that you are actively looking on the job boards, even if you sort of save jobs yeah, and things. Yeah, definitely. And, and you can always come back to them. I think another good tip as well is if you've been made redundant for a company, I would go to their competitor and I'd say, hey, yes. look, I'm, I'm coming from your competitor. I've unfortunately been made redundant. I've got the skill set that you're looking for. I've got the industry experience that you're looking for. And they might be able to bring you on it. You know, it might be that you're coming to them at the right time, that someone else has left or yeah. that they actually are looking to expand because some, some companies will be able to actually monopolize on this sort of state of affairs. It depends what industry you're in but you know you do have to look around because some companies will thrive but some of them will go under so I don't think you know it's not all doom and gloom because you no. might be able to jump into a company that is a better fit for uh, you or is very similar um yeah and that really helps you with your next sort of career move and yeah. I think in that that's a really good point that you've actually just made because I think if you really do your research as well like look at business news and yeah. look at all the different things even like stocks and shares and whatever and see yeah. what companies are on the up because there will be, like you say, there will be companies that are profiteering throughout this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And it's finding those companies that are on the up and that you sort of just present yourself to them. Yeah. And I think as well, you know, being made redundant is, you know, although it's an awful thing, it's you can spin it to a positive mm -hmm. and think, right, you know what? I'm currently working as a marketing manager. I think I'm ready for head of marketing. So now, you know, though it's a little bit sooner than I may have wanted or a little bit unexpected, now's the time that I'm now going to apply to that position that I wanted or I'm going to apply for a role that's a little bit higher up or, you know, something like that. Just think, do you know what? What career move have I wanted to make for a while but I've been yeah. too scared? Now I've been thrown into it and, you know, it might be, you might in years to come say that was, do you know what? That was the best thing that happened to me because yeah. I wouldn't have made that huge leap. Because you wouldn't have been sort of almost forced into it exactly. and I think that's the thing and obviously people some people may find themselves with a gap in employment which obviously from a recruiter's perspective as long as you've got an explanation for it that's absolutely fine but I would say if you do find yourself in that situation always try and make sure that you're doing things to upskill yourself Definitely, and things yeah. that could help you secure that next job so be active on LinkedIn look at little you can get loads of free courses online that you can do even if you're like brushing up on your Excel skills or something yeah. just stay super active in the marketplace Definitely. so that you can secure that job and then if it does ever come around to it where you're in a competitive situation and someone's like well what did you do in that month off and you're like well I did x I did this course I did blah 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 yeah then it just shows sort of your proactive and sort of nature that you do want to actually find something. Definitely. And, and you know, in the meantime, I suppose just to sort of draw this to a close, in the meantime, there are resources that you can access. Um, obviously, there is Job Seekers Allowance. Um, there are travel discounts. I know Timpsons offer free dry cleaning for interview outfits. So, you know, there are sort of tools um, that, and sort of um, systems set in place for people who are being made redundant or people out of work, you know, that you can access while you're trying to get back on yeah. your feet and get back into the market. So I suppose just be proactive in making sure that your bases are covered, make sure that you're ready for your next step when it comes and just make sure you're talking to the right people, having the right conversations. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Next week, we'll be discussing communication and ghosting in recruitment.